I debriefed uh, with him uh, and left for the last time. So you and I both share a passion for national security of our country. Can you share with me, what's your view on how January 6th impacted our national security? Well, when you have a presidential transition, even under the best circumstances, um, it is a, it's a time of vulnerability. It's a time of vulnerability. Um, uh, for, you know, and when you have a contested election, um, I, I was certainly concerned that some of our adversaries uh, would be tempted to probe uh, or test uh, U.S. resolve. Uh, as an example, uh, in late December, uh, the Iranian government attacked the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. They did that using some of their terrorist proxies. Uh, President Trump did handle that. He, he sent a very clear uh, warning to the Ayatollah and his regime, uh, which uh, I, I think had a, had a uh, useful effect. Um, I, I think that we would have handled other threats of that nature, and luckily no other threats uh, uh, materialized uh, before the inauguration on the 20th. But our national security was harmed in a different way by uh, the 6th of January, and that is that it, um, uh, I, I think it emboldened uh, our, our enemies by uh, helping give them ammunition to feed a narrative that our system of government doesn't work, uh, that the United States uh, is in decline, uh, China, uh, the, the Putin regime in Russia, Tehran, uh, they're fond of pushing those kinds of narratives, and by the way, they're wrong. The, the, you know, we've been hearing for the entirety of U.S. history from kings and despots that the United States uh, is, uh, uh, is in decline, and uh, those kings and despots have been proven wrong every single time. But nonetheless, January 6th helped feed a perception that I think uh, emboldens our adversaries. You know, the, the other part, I, I think, is simply our, our allies. I heard from a lot of uh, friends in Europe, in Asia, allies, close friends, and supporters of the United States, that they were concerned about the health of our democracy. And so I think it's incumbent upon us to put their minds at ease, to put our own hearts at ease, uh, by investigating uh, what happened on the 6th and making sure that it never happens again. Look, I've always said democracies are not defined by bad days. They're defined by how they recover from those bad days. And that's what we're doing here is to bring accountability to that so we can actually come back even stronger than when we went into January 6th. Ms. Matthews, as you left the White House for the last time that night, January 6th, what did you think Americans needed to hear from President Trump? I think that the American people needed to hear and see him publicly commit to a peaceful or at least orderly transition of power. Um, in the aftermath of the Capitol attack, it wasn't just enough for us to ask him to condemn the violence. He needed to agree that he would peacefully transfer power over to the incoming administration because that's one of our fundamentals and what it means to live in a democracy. And so that evening when I resigned, um, the resignation statement that I drafted, I referenced this and I said, our nation needs a peaceful transfer of power in hopes that it would put some sort of public pressure on the White House and President Trump to publicly agree to an orderly transition.